and year 12. This is example 15. So here we're now going to say calculating the investment required to establish a perpetuity. So how does perpetuity happen again? So remember, you are the individual and you are providing money to an institution or organization. That's why they are very happy. And so when they get your money, they can do investments and whatnot and grow their business. In the meantime, what do you, why do you do that? Is because they give something in return. And often that is a, of an interest. Now, obviously, if they can uh, hold on to your money, that they'd be pretty happy with that. So perpetuity is the idea that you don't decrease the amount that they uh, have of your money, they maintain the same. So if you put $50 in there, it stays as $50, but what you get back is the interest on whatever's in the bank account, okay, or whatever they have of you. That's perpetuity, whereas annuity is the idea that they not only hold your money for a certain time, but they will also give you back some extra withdrawal amount. So you get a, a payment of your money in sums, in a, a small sums, and then on top of that, they give you interest as well. So in a perpetuity, you don't get the withdrawal, but it means that this will go on indefinitely because your $50 there, and they will keep paying interest as long as you're happy to uh, leave your $50 with them. That's the idea, okay? So if that's perpetuity, well, what's this question asking? So how much money will need to be invested in a perpetuity account? Uh, earning interest of 4.2% per annum. So we now know interest rate is 4.2% per annum. Okay, so I'm just gonna change that. So we know that's what the rate is, that's what they're giving back to you. Compounding monthly, so that's key. So every month they're going to be um, providing this interest and it is $200 will be withdrawn every month. So that means they are paying you $200 uh, in interest fees. So the question is, how much money should you have in this uh, account to begin with? So, well, we can work backwards here because normally to find um, interest, the amount that they pay you per month, is you would say 4.2%, actually I'll do another color. You would normally say 4.2% of whatever the amount you had. So I'm just gonna do the dollar sign. And that, that will give you the monthly repayment. Okay, so all I'm doing now is I'm actually using the formula that you would have got up here. D is the regular payments received. So that's what D is and that's my monthly repayment there. So that's essentially D. And the interest rate, which is R over 100, we have 4.2 over 100 times. And it says here V naught. Okay, so V naught, just showing you up here, V naught is the amount that you invested into the account, which we didn't know. So this is V naught. This is our R over 100, okay? And D is the amount. So what, how much do we want to get back every month? In this case, if $200 will be withdrawn every month, that means we know that the amount you're getting back is $200. You got 4.2 over 100 multiplied to V naught. Uh, and V0 tells you the investment that you're putting in. Now on our CAS, you can do this by hand as well, you can solve it, or you can do it on your CAS, and I'm just gonna quickly show you what I would have done. I would have just done my CAS, and I would have said solve, so menu algebra three, and then number one, so menu three one. Solve, what am I solving for? I want $200 as my uh, monthly repayments, or the receive uh, payments that I'm gonna get, and it is, uh, was a 4.2 percent so it's out of a hundred multiplied to whatever value of the investment that I'm putting in orig originally so v naught I'm going to call it x because you know we're always solving for x generally by convention and notice here I do comma x so I tell it to solve for x and here we go it tells us that this is the amount that you would need if you wanted 4.2%, if you wanted $200 for payments, that's what you can do here. So I'm just gonna put my calculator solutions here on the side so that you know. But you could have worked it out by hand as well. Um, you could have done uh, V naught is equal to 200 multiplied to 100 and then divide that by 4.2 and you'd also get the same answer as well. Uh, and all how I knew that was I just did the opposite 
uh, as you can see here, the opposite of divide 100. So I would have done times 100 on both sides. And then since that's 4.2 times V0, so I did divide it by 4.2. But if that's too confusing, ignore what I just said and just simply uh, do it on your CAS over there. But you could have done um, 200 times 100 divided by 4.2 and you get the same answer as well. Okay, so both of which does the same thing. But there you go. So what's the amount? That tells me that the amount is $4,761 correcting to the nearest dollar. 0 0.90 would imply that you would need $4,762 invested. So that means when you're opening up a perpetuity account, it's expected that you'll be putting $4,762 and that way 